here we have a HP Compaq NX9010 laptop that I'm going to follow the eight steps to refurbishment on. As always, we start with step number one, which is inspect it for damage. And I can't see anything on the top just yet. There's a few sticky marks. The bottom looks nice. Missing feet, but then it is rather old. Doesn't appear to be any grill damage. Optical drive covers okay. Grills here are okay. What's the back like? Yeah, looks fine. I can't see any damage there. Let's have a look on the inside. Screen needs cleaning. Inspect it for damage. It's all alright. Step number two. Whoops. Step number two. We need to test it. We've got an LED lit up here, so that's a good start. Let's press the power button and see what happens. Well, we've got the three LEDs come on. Oh, Pentium 4 logo on the screen. At least it's starting to post anyway. Ah, Windows XP. Now it says here, setup is being restarted. So it looks like somebody started to install Windows XP and then has stopped for some reason. Could be they were just proving that the laptop worked before they got rid of it or something, I don't know. Well, step number two is it appears to work. So step number three, now I need to clean it. Just going to nip off and air dust it. There we go, it's had a bit of an air dust. Let's move the power lead out of the way. The sticky stuff remover, screen clean and foam spray. What I'm doing now is giving it a bit of a, a superficial clean just to get rid of the uh, surface dirt if you like so that I can see which areas need a bit of a thorough clean or a specialist clean like with the uh, screen clean which I use on obviously the screen but also the keyboard and then the sticky stuff remover that will get rid of any uh, sticky marks like perhaps here. Time to use the AF screen clean. Also good for cleaning the keyboards and the trackpad. If you have particularly grubby stains and marks around the bottom of the keys from, from people's dirty fingers, then a good thing to use is a cotton bud. Or a Q-tip as they say in America. Never mind. Want to use some of this sticky stuff remover. It's stuff that removes sticky stuff. Now we move on to step four where we fix or repair any issues. Well I haven't found any issues yet so we're all good with step four. Step five is to replace the consumer bulbs. Now where is the CMOS battery in this? I've had a good look around YouTube and Google and I can't seem to find any information on where the CMOS battery for the NX9010 is, which suggests to me that not many people, if any, have ever replaced it. So it's probably in a hard to reach place. So for the time being, I'm gonna give that bit a miss. So step five, replace consumables, is complete. Step number six is consider any upgrades. Now, as we all know, Windows XP really loves 512 megabytes or more. This laptop has got exactly 512, so it's all right, isn't it? Well, no, because it's got onboard graphics, so some of that 512 megabytes is shared with the onboard graphics, leaving under 512 megabytes available to Windows XP. So, let's have a look underneath. I'm guessing where it says RAM is where the RAM is. Let's see if I can zoom in. Zoom. There we go. Here we are, DDR333. Let's see if I've got some DDR333 RAM. Here they are, hiding over here, look. Oh, there's a HP one on the top. Zoom. Let's zoom out. Connect up the power and external VGA. Let's see if she still powers on.
well. Posting. There we go. Press any key to boot from CD. What you're seeing on screen um, just here is exactly what I'm seeing on the screen here, including the big thick black border. And that's because the resolution of this laptop is quite high and the resolution of the Windows installation is quite low. So I apologise for the black border, but that's realistic. Well, that's the operating system installed. Now for the drivers. That's looking better. Let's get the others installed. Time to do the Windows updates. Well, you can't actually do Windows updates anymore because Microsoft have ceased that service. But what I have got on this memory stick is WSUS Offline. Basically has on all of the knowledge base articles from the Microsoft Windows Updates site and it will automatically install them on here. So I'm just going to choose to update that. Let's do, might as well do the whole lot. Press start. Now you just leave it, it automatically creates a local user, reboots into that each time and keeps checking to see if any more updates are required and when it's finished it logs you back in as the original user that you started off in. And that's it. Time to install some software so this computer can actually be used. Just putting the Windows operating system on and Windows updates is one thing but if you're refurbishing a laptop, you're going to want to use it for something. So I'm going to put on some uh, freeware utilities and open source software such as OpenOffice. Here we go. And there you have it. The software has been refreshed. Now for step eight, the final clean. Yep, I know it was also step three, but We've done four, five, six, and seven since then, and have my grubby fingerprints all over it. So although I didn't touch the top, I did touch the keyboard and the uh, trackpad quite a bit. So I'm going to use my trusty AF screen clean on obviously a cloth. So first things first, let's shut her down. Get rid of that, and that, and that. And there we go. There we go. One properly refurbished laptop. Just to recap, step one, we inspected it for damage. Step two, we tested it. Step three, we gave it a jolly good clean. Step four, we fixed and repaired any issues. There weren't any, so this was good. We replaced the consumables. Well, we didn't because I couldn't find what the CMOS battery is, but it does seem to be keeping the, the date and time, so that looks to be fine. Step six, we considered upgrades. We upgraded the RAM from 512 to 756. Then we refreshed the software by installing Windows XP from scratch, all the drivers, and then we added some open source and freeware utilities and applications. And finally, step number eight, we gave it a jolly good clean again to get rid of all of my grubby fingerprints from doing all the previous steps. So there you have it, one properly refurbished laptop. Thank you for watching. Please click on the like button if you've enjoyed the video or found it useful. And don't forget, if you don't want to miss any of my videos, click on subscribe. See you next time.